Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Life with Leverly podcast. I'm excited for today's guest because she is a girl's girl who has figured out how to make easy yet nutritious meals for the whole family. Today's guest is Lily of Lily Eats and Tells. She's a wife, mom, author, entrepreneur, and food lover who fused her passion of photography and food to create a business helping us all eat a little healthier. Today, we're chatting through how she didn't want to sacrifice flavor for the sake of nutrition, her meal planning process as a busy mom on the go, and specific recipes that are sure to be your new weeknight go-tos. I can't wait to try some of these with my family this week, so let me know if you try some too. Here's my conversation with Lily. Okay. Hi, Lily. I am so excited to have you on today's episode of the Life with Loverly podcast. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is such an honor. I feel like I have loved following along with you, with your recipes, with just everything you do on stories. You're so personable in the kitchen. Um, And I feel like you've been having some amazing travels lately. I know it has been a good season of travel. Yeah. Where were you you and your husband? Did you guys go to where were you? Bora Bora? Bora, Bora, Have you you done Bora Bora? No. You have to go. It wasn't even on my bucket list, honestly. It was sort of a last minute thing. We had been planning to go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights. That's what he wanted to do for his birthday in January. But I'm having such an issue with cold right now with like my fingertips feeling like they're going to fall off. So it was sort of a last minute plan. Like, I don't know if I can swing it. So we found like a Costco deal. And so it was so quick. I mean, we just like planned it and went like three or four weeks later. And now I feel like everybody needs to go. It was so amazing. It was really fun. It looked so beautiful. I also loved how you guys did it was like a real, and I think the caption said like we're embarrassing our kids. Oh yeah, or something like that. <laughs> <And> we did. <laughs> I loved that. I could just like imagine your kids like scrolling and being like, "Oh, oh my god, dad!" I mean, just wait. It's the funniest thing having teenagers because for so long, like, there's a lot of influencers where I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to share that anymore when you have teenagers." You know, there's a lot you can talk about when kids are little, and my kids aren't even on social media, but of course their friends are. So my right. daughter in high school, she's not on social media, but her friends are always sending her screenshots if like she's in a picture, you know, so I have to make sure like everything's approved, which I should anyway, oh but gosh. you know, anyway. Okay. So I know, know this question has nothing to do with what we're really going to be talking about, but how do you like manage or how did you guys come up with like, did she just not want to be on social media or do you guys have like some rules in your house around like social media for your kids? Yeah. This is so interesting to me. I know. Sorry. I just threw that out. Like it was normal. I mean, yeah, we just, it's so tricky and it might evolve. It's already evolved. Our our oldest daughter actually didn't even have a smartphone. I'm going to sound like a crazy person, but. Okay. No, you're not because (laughs) all of my friends, we are like, I hope that we can band together and like not let the kids have this until they're like in college or high school. You know, honestly, I feel like good, good for you. Like I kind of feel like there was a window where nobody like we're lucky if we didn't get sucked in too soon because I feel like there was a window where nobody was prepared for how right. prevalent they'd be, how common they'd be, and then the dangers that would come with them. So everybody just kind of got swept up at the same time with all their kids getting phones early, and then it's really hard to pull back. It's like really right. hard to take something away that becomes such a part of your life. And we understand that, but right. um, and you really have to like drill it into them young why and out of love and you know so that because so far for me it's been fine my kids are mostly on board with it you know so anyway the long story the short story is yeah our oldest daughter didn't even have a smartphone until I think her junior year of high school she's now in college and when she left for college I was like I think I actually want you to get Instagram so that we can kind of talk on there you know but um right but she was also unique and kind of very uninterested in like the typical teenage thing so it was an easy guinea pig for us right and so my second daughter is yeah. more traditionally like teenage minded. And so right. she has more interest in it all, but it's still super respectful of like our concerns about it. So, you know, she, she has a phone and we just are careful with it, but she doesn't do Instagram or any of that yet. Yeah. 
I think about that all the time with my kids and even just like in what I share about them or with them, which isn't really a ton. Yeah. Um, but I always am just like, what if in a few years they like don't want I know like, to be a part of this? Or what if, you know, I, I don't want them to like get bullied or be you know, because of something I'm doing or showing like on mm-hmm. Instagram, but I always just feel it's like not super common to talk to people who are like, this is a rule in our house. And like, this is what we're holding to. Right. So maybe like off the air, I'll have to ask you some more questions. Yeah, when I, get a I know. I do, have, I do have some strong feelings about it. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to. I mean, like yeah. you have to keep your kids safe, you know? Yeah. I mean, and this it's the little it's the little things. Like I feel like people think about the big things, like the the horrible stories of kids getting like kidnapped or like um groomed. I mean, those are horrible, but way more common, like like almost inevitable is just what it does to like a girl's self-esteem and, and a boy, you know. I mean it's so it's, right. it's just yeah, you, you need a lot more of a foundation, I think, before you're just being like pelted with all of that from other people. Know. You know? It's yeah. so true. Well, I appreciate you sharing um, that little tidbit. I know yeah. that wasn't even <laughs> planned, but I think we've got a lot of moms who listen and who have kids of all ages who are just have questions. So if anything, I hope this just gives them some confidence or help in making yeah. decisions if they need it. But yeah. Um, okay, so let's get into our questions. We've got some really great ones. I'm so excited to just talk with you and hear from you. I know my listeners are going to love it as well. Um, okay, let's start out with how did you find the courage to start posting your meals and recipes on Instagram? Oh, I actually love that question because it was, I, I remember it so well. It was like se- seven years ago, seven years ago, I don't know, something like that. Um, and I didn't even know Instagram could be like a business or it wasn't somewhere I went for any of that. I only followed some friends. It wasn't even on there very much. And I had started counting macros, which is what my page is like specifically about. Um, and I was just so excited. I always liked to cook, but I was so, it was like I had this new challenge of creating these recipes that were specifically like macro balance, macro friendly. Mm-hmm. And I was just so excited about like what I could create. It was sort of this, it opened this new door, you know, as a mom and after pregnancies, you're constantly like trying to eat healthy and we all know how to eat healthy for the most part, but sometimes it could just feel like, yeah, I know I should just be eating lean protein and vegetables all the time. And it's just sort of boring and I didn't want to, it wasn't exciting. Um, And this was like this new thing. Like I have more control than I thought. If I want to build a beautiful sandwich for lunch, I can, and it can be a perfect part of my day with my health, healthy plan, you know? So I just was so proud of these meals that I was naturally like taking pictures and I would put on my Instagram and then I felt embarrassed. Like I was going to bug all my friends and family. Like this is just my normal account. And so I started this secret food account, honestly, just to like look back at the recipes myself and like see the food. Right. And it was and when, be like reminded that was really good. I'm making that. Yeah, again. <laughs> I was just proud of it. And I honestly was like, someone else needs to know you can make this big, beautiful thing. And it's actually the same as those few bites of your kid's food you were eating and like the three French fries in the car that you didn't even feel like you had a meal or you can have that. You know, I was just like so excited about sharing it. So it started like that. I also love your Instagram handle, Lily Eats and Tells. I think it's just like such a fun play oh, on, you. I don't know. I just have always been like, that is so clever. Thank you. So, well, bravo. I started, <laughs> did you know that was a change? I started as Lily Loves Macros. No, so I that, didn't know that. Yeah, it was Lily Loves Macros for probably two or three years at least. And then I started my blog and I knew when I was starting the blog, I I realized, like, I don't know that I want to be so, so committed to, like, the word macros, you know? Right. And so that kind of, like, evolved that and still – and, yeah, I'm so glad because macro counting is, like, a big pro my page, but obviously, like, that's not everything. And I've learned that a huge part of my audience really has no interest in macros. They just appreciate that they know it's balanced, you know? Right. It's just healthy food. Totally. Chris um, did – my husband did faster way to fat loss. Yeah. And 
a few years ago. And so he started getting into like counting macros. And I think he was like the one who originally found your page and like sent me a recipe on Instagram and was like, I think I want to try this. And then oh, cool. I started like looking through being like, whoa, these all look delicious. Like, you know, yes, of okay. course. Um, so I just think it's, it's just funny. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Okay. So when did you realize you could turn what you had going into a business? Um, it took me a while. Like when you asked before, what gave me the courage to start posting? Yeah. I'm realizing like I didn't really answer that because it was more a matter of posting was one thing because it was secret, but it was, yeah. it was like another thing to decide like, am I going to start like trickling this out? And I'm one of those people, like I feel like some, it's not that I lack confidence. I don't feel like it's a problem in that sense, but I, but I feel like some people are like, even like as in general, as a recipe share, you'll hear a lot of like, you are going to love this. You are going to want my recipe for blah, blah, blah. I don't feel like that. Like, I feel like, yeah. I don't know. You might like it. I love it. I don't know. Right. Every likes different things. Like that's how I'm wired. So it's really, it's not that it's like so hard to put myself out there. Like I'm so afraid they're not going to like it, but I, but I just don't ever want to assume that like people are going to love this. So I think right. that made it hard for me to like start trickling it out there as I didn't want it to seem like I was starting trying to start a business or do the whole like. I want to get noticed on Instagram because that was becoming a thing. And so I didn't want to use hashtags. because so I was like, well, then my friends will know that I'm hoping that other people find it. Like, I was so nervous about all that. You know, I just felt silly. Um, right. But I'm so glad I got past it because it became such an amazing thing. But I think eventually yeah, I just kind of clicked those few boxes that allowed it to go to like your Facebook friends or whatever it was. And then it just grew. It just grew so right. organically. And that was so validating because I, I got such a wonderful – positive, like grateful response from people on Instagram so consistently that it gave me such a good, healthy amount of confidence of like, okay, like there's a reason I'm sharing this stuff and I'm just going to push past that feeling of like, you know, whatever that was. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally get that. And I feel like I kind of started around the same time or maybe a year before and it definitely like, it was just so different back then, yeah. you know, it wasn't there are just so many different things going on now. So, so when we were starting, it was just kind of like, hey, this is like the stuff I like. Like, right. And then there was this wave of like, well, now we need to like use all these hashtags and try to like get seen. Right. Um, but then at the end of the day, it, it was still like, well, no, like I'm just sharing this because I'm genuinely like happy to share this outfit or this recipe. So right. I totally get that. Yeah. And you um, probably feel the same if you started at the same time. I feel like that, I, like a lot of people, um, I don't know, hate all the changes and I, I get that, but I'm also just like, it, it's just part of it. But, um, right. but I do love, I'm so grateful that I started when I did, because I feel like I'm grateful for the growth now, but my audience in the beginning, and I still feel like they're there. They're so loyal and it's such a yeah. different, it's so different than like, this attempt to go viral and reach a lot of people. Right. Like I still am kind it's of like, like they really know you. That. Yeah. They're right. there. For, yeah. Because they know what you're creating and they want it, you know, anyway. It's so that's true. A good group of friends. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit more about macros because some of our listeners might not have any idea what a macro even is. Right. So can you give us a quick rundown on exactly what a macro is and how do you figure out the, like, how can we figure out the math for ourselves? Yeah. So macros just refers to the word macronutrients. It's just short for macronutrients, which are your carbohydrates, your fats, and your proteins. Those are your macronutrients. So you've got lots of micronutrients in your food that matter too. But when you're counting your macros, you're just counting those three nutrients. And naturally, because people get confused about like calories don't matter or whatever, um, naturally, they go hand in hand because mathematically, your macros are going to add up to a certain amount of calories. Um, I won't bore you with like too many of those details, but you can, you know, there's like four... Every gram of fat costs you nine calories. Every gram of um, carbs or protein costs you four calories. So that's how the math kind of adds up and how you'll use formulas to calculate. If you want to, let's say you want to actually gain weight, you want to gain muscle, then you're going to put your calories a little higher 
than you usually eat. And you're going to break those down into specifically what macronutrients you want to eat to hit those calories. And the reason why that matters, because really this is just kind of a, um, it's a more detailed way to count your calories, right? Yeah. Because calories are a king. If you want to lose weight, you'll go, you'll eat fewer calories than your body uses in maintenance. And if you want to gain weight, you'll eat more calories. But the reason why this, this matters, this macro counting can matter is you don't necessarily just want to lose weight. You want to lose body fat and you want to keep muscle. And that's where getting a good amount of protein matters a lot. And then beside like fat and carbs, it's more, you can kind of be flexible with those, but like a, a calculator or a coach is usually going to give you a certain breakdown. And, and that can really vary, like depending on your lifestyle, what you prefer, what feels best to you, but you just take the things into consideration. Like carbs are going to give you more obvious energy. And so you might have more success with lower fat, more carbs, because you'll have more energy to push hard in the gym. But then some people just feel a lot better on higher fat, low carb, because you know, carbs can like give you more gas and bloat and things like that. Right. Anyway. So, but the, the key is that your calories are kind of set for your goal and your protein is set. Those are like the, the most important things. And then you dial it in more with the other macros. That's what I would say. Love it. I feel like that's easy to understand. So when you are planning out a meal, what is your process and how can you make this easy for moms who are on the go, who want to eat nutritious meals? So like when I'm planning a meal for my family or when I'm planning like a new recipe for like Mm, my work? I don't know. Let's talk about both. Let's talk about, (laughs) yeah. I mean, I I know they're kind of the same because for me, I always say this on my page. I have, I have four different cookbooks and they have like themes kind of, and And they're all great. Thank you. (laughs) The favorite amongst my audience is always the one dish meal books. So I just did a second volume of that. And I understand why, because whenever I'm making one, I'm like, uh, it reminds me like, oh, this is why people love this because you're genuinely like everything's in this pot and my kitchen can be cleaned up by the time dinner's like ready to eat. And it's just limited. There's not other accessories all over the counter, which is how I usually eat is with accessories. <laughs> right. Um, and, and people love that because one of the huge challenges you can imagine to counting macros, and this is why I started it, my page and everything is because I was so excited about this success I was having when I first started counting macros. Um, but I felt so limited in what I could cook because it's super overwhelming if you don't want to add another part-time job to your life as a mom, right? Very overwhelming to calculate recipes. Like it's one thing to say, I'm putting grilled chicken on my plate I'm putting steamed broccoli and rice, you know, and you know, you're and, and olive oil and you've got your carbs, fat and protein and you can weigh it out. Um, but who wants to eat like that forever? You want to be able to eat with your family. You want to be able to go out. You want to be able to like live a normal life. And I don't really feel like anything does you that much good if you can't sustain it and, and, or at least use it as a tool really right. So that's, I, I kind of digress, but that's why I ended up doing this is I, I was like, got really good at like calculating my own recipes and through that process was able to share them with other people. And now that's what I do. But, um, but so when I'm making a recipe for my family, I still love a very dissected meal, not broccoli, rice, and chicken, but I love to bulk prep a protein because when you're counting your macros, protein is really important. Mm -hmm. A lot of people really struggle to hit their protein. And the main reason for that, like whenever I hear that, I I get it. I get it, but I also don't relate to it. Um, But I totally understand because when you're new at it or even not, if you're trying to eat normal food, if you're trying to like eat the random um, packaged Costco meal that your husband brought home and you're hoping that's going to fit in your macros. You can fit anything technically. That's what people love to say, but you're going to wipe out all your fat in this random fettuccine Alfredo, all your right. like fat goal for the day. It's going to be wiped out in this one meal. And yet you've only like touched protein. So now you're in a bind because you're like, well, I really want to hit my goals, but how on earth are we hitting our protein? Now I have to eat egg whites and like chicken breast the rest of the day and nothing else, you know? So that's where like the right. smart planning comes into play. So you don't feel like you're suffering or like you're eating these horrible, boring meals of just, just chicken. When you plan to have like the protein in the delicious ways, like I have to admit, I don't even relate to wanting to chug like a protein shake first thing in the morning. A lot of people love to do that. Like 30 grams of protein right off the bat. I would never want to do that. Cause to me, yeah. I'm like every meal 
every salad I eat, you better believe I would love more chicken in it. That's just a bigger yeah. meal when I'm hungry, you know? Right. I'm never going to want to sneak protein in. It's not like a, a naughty vegetable that I just want to like sneak in and not know I'm having, you know? Right. Like I want to enjoy it. I feel like I went off track. Where was I? <laughs> um, well, just like helping us build a nutritious meal like that we can oh, yeah. I was like, share with our families. And how I do with my family. So I really love to isolate the protein. So I have total control of adding that to all the meals I want. So we do a lot of bulk prep, instant pot chicken and pork and a bunch of grilled chicken or a bunch of taco meat or meatballs. And so that's how I wrote my first cookbook. And then that mm-hmm. bulk protein is used in several different recipes. It's the way that I've got my new meal plan set up as well. So the meal plan, and I'm not trying to like plug these things. I'm just trying to, sorry, explain like how. No, this no, no. I, this is great information. I think <laughs> yeah. this is awesome. So, so the meal plan is kind of merging those two concepts. That I love this bulk prep protein, but then I understand that sometimes a one dish meal is like so, so great. So the meal plan will start with like one bulk prep protein and you'll use that in three different meals through the week that don't feel like repeated meals because they're totally different. Right. You're gonna grill your chicken and have it with like a beautiful salad and some yummy roasted potatoes on Sunday. And then you're gonna slice that chicken and make really yummy paninis on Wednesday, etc. But so that's how I think. I I always think like with the protein first. And when I'm doing like building a one dish meal, it's the same thing. I'm never gonna be like, oh I really want to make this pasta and then at the end I'm like, oh how are we gonna get our protein in? I'm always right. gonna start with if this is going to serve my family of six, I'm going to do like probably six times four ounces of chicken in there because I know that that's what I would want in each portion, at least four ounces of chicken. And then I'm going to build around that, you know, and it's probably going to be a lot more chicken and veggies and a lot less pasta than a classic recipe of pasta, chicken and veggies would be so that your balance will actually work out, you know? Yeah. No, I love that. I remember reading one of your cookbooks one time. Um, I was looking at a recipe and then at the top it was like, okay, this you're pulling this chicken from like the bulk that you made like earlier in the week. And I like look read back and I was like, okay, so like here's where – like it was making sense on, and kind of yeah. like why you should want to – meal prep on one day and how that's really going to save you time later in the week. Right. And you know, with your meals. Yeah. And you see a lot of like beautiful meal prep on Instagram and um, like where they do like the stacks of all the same food and all the breakfast. And I've never been like that. I'm definitely not like organized enough or I don't necessarily want to eat that same thing every day. Although I eat a lot of the same thing every day. But I don't, I don't know. For me, it feels too limiting to, to like, I'm going to pull out my dish and eat that every day. Right. It's really great for some people, but I really like the variety of all of those bits and pieces, like all the fresh veggies and sauces. So my meal prep is protein. We both prep the protein. And then I just feel like yep. if nothing else, like you can always take that protein. I don't care what it is and build tacos or sandwiches or mm-hmm. rice bowls. And if my family's having rice bowls and I need something lower carb that night, then mine just goes over greens or over cauliflower rice. It's just a much easier formula if you like to kind of fly by the seat of your pants sometimes, which is probably how I do more often. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, if you are trying to trying to count macros and trying to hit a certain amount of protein, you can always add more to your meal. You can use the suggested portion that I've given you, but if you're short that day because you didn't have a bunch in your lunch salad, you just add more protein. Where if you're eating a one-dish meal, especially if it's not, a macro friendly one dish meal, it is it, that's nearly impossible because you're like, oh, I need more protein. I'll take another scoop of chicken Alfredo. Well, no, now you've just eaten like you know a, a lot more carbs and a lot more fat, and a lot more calories than your goals. Right. Then work for your goals. You know. Yeah, that's so true. I think sometimes people just don't even understand the importance of like eating the protein and how like like you just said like a second helping of that doesn't equal more protein. Right. Like, Right. So you're not going to hit those goals that way. Right. Even if you just have a really high fat protein. I love, I love all meats, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, we did a pork butt on Sunday and it's like a very, very fatty meat. I'm going to love some, but I'm not going to 
plan on hitting my protein with it because again, it would use up all my fat. So I'm going to have a little bit. And then I'm probably going to also pull out some prepped chicken from the fridge to supplement my meal to get my protein, you know? Yeah. Um, Have you ever made a recipe that just like turns, turned out like so terrible in your family was like, what (laughs) is this? (laughs) I mean, for sure. But it probably wouldn't make it that far. Like if I, if it turned out terrible, it was probably an experiment, which I do earlier in the day. And okay. We just, we just pulled out the prep chicken and ate something else for dinner. You know? <laughs> You're like, nope, that one's not making the cookbook. <laughs> like no one's going to eat that. But I'll be honest, even like, even some stuff that I think is good um, is not going to be a hit with my kids. That's the thing right. about the one dish meals. Like, again, people love them. My boys are about as picky as they come. I get comments all the time from people who are like, oh, my kids never like vegetables. And now with your recipe, they eat all these vegetables. And I'm always like, look at this, Finn. Like, look at this, Knox. What about you? <laughs> like, You're I like, come on. I don't even eat it. Yeah, they're still so, so picky. So, so our dissected meals are much easier for them because they can always have the protein and I can just slice them some cucumber on the side. They don't have to have the Greek salsa on their pita or whatever it is. You know? Right. Um, but if I can make it work for them. Yeah. If I do a huge, like veggie packed spaghetti squash casserole, like they're not going to touch that. (laughs) I think it's great. My husband loves it. My daughters love it, but they're not going to touch it. Right. Oh man. I know I've got a picky eater too. And I, I think she's just like made up of a carb. Like she's just a carb girl. (laughs) So I'm like, thankfully she's starting to really like steak and like if I cut it up really small, she's almost four. I like notice she'll eat it more than if it's like cut up bigger because that's yeah. like intimidating. Yeah. Um, so I've gotten her to eat like chicken and hamburger and steak if I can like just remember to f- cut it up a little bit more finely. So yeah. I'm like, we got to get right. her some color on her plate. She likes right. a lot of like white things. Yeah. Can't blame her. Always, I'm like, we got we got to do more, girl. <laughs> um, so okay, hard. what are your thoughts on the air fryer? Do we love it? Do we hate it? How often are you using I, one? If so, I actually love the air fryer, but that is a funny question because if you'd asked me, I was a slow adapter. Like I feel like, yeah, yeah I agree. It, me too. Probably, yeah. It probably took me. I don't know. It was it was definitely like all over the place, and I was just kind of annoyed. Like, who needs one more gadget? The oven does everything. Yeah. I usually feel like that about gadgets. I love my knives. I love like good knives. I love a good cutting board and everything just keeps, you know, gadgets just keep coming around, but no, it's huge, but I have to admit it's huge in my house, probably because what I just confessed about my boys, cause they right. are, they're reheating leftover pizza. Like, like, do I admit it? Do I admit what they're eating? I'm just going to, but we're still doing like, I mean, it's Ross, but he'll bring home like Costco taquitos. So that we're busy, you know, so that when they come home from school and they just need something quick, like we're not above it. They're eating like normal stuff right. like that. And the air fryer is just so easy. I so, totally I agree. We make so many of the that like the Costco bear chicken nuggets in yeah. the air fryer oh, for the good. kids. I'm like, yeah. those are so good. I always end yeah. up chopping it up and like throwing that on a Caesar salad too. Yeah, those are, um, those are like so good. And I love it yeah. for real things too. I still, because I have a big family and I usually like to make like big portions of things um, and have leftovers, it's not like a go-to for like legitimate dinner recipes for me, but we use it all the time for like anything. Yeah. If I just want a small batch, if I just need some protein, I can fit three whole chicken breasts in there or fish. I love to do fish in there. Sometimes if my family, if I'm really needing, wanting to keep it light. And like I said, my family is doing like pork butt or ribs or like real burgers and I didn't get any lean meat. I'll just quickly throw in some chicken tenderloins in there or some fish for me. And it's just so like mindless or roasted veggies. You know, if I'm like, probably when I'm prepping lots of other things in the kitchen and already using my ovens <laughs> and right. then it's just nice to have like one more spot to like roast a little batch of potatoes or something. I think it's so handy. And it's so quick. Like it's so quick. I feel like so many times I'm like, oh, that wasn't like, I need, I forgot to like put the fries in there. Like, yeah. you know, it takes so much longer to do in the oven, but it's just so quick in the air fryer. Right. Totally. You don't have to preheat it. And I don't even always wash it. I kind of treat it like a toaster, you know, where we're only yeah. washing it like every three I days agree. when it needs it. So it's still so easy. 
I love it. Okay, so you mentioned a second ago that you like love your knives and you love your cutting board. What is your like go to cutting board? Like, do you have one that you recommend and like love? I just love wood. I don't use any plastic cutting boards. I definitely prefer wood cutting boards. I have one of those huge like thick ones from Crane Barrel um, mm-hmm. that I love, love, love for it's next to my sink. It never leaves. So, and we are chopping all day long. So I love that for like the basics, like berries, any kind of like morning fruit my kids are doing or like bread or lettuces, anything like not stinky, like onions or raw meat just because we just kind of wipe it down and then scrub it during the day. Um, right. And other than that, I just use like, I think some target wooden ones, like nothing special, but I just have a huge stack of wooden ones that like, I love wooden ones because you don't have to squeeze them into a drawer. They're pretty enough to just like prop on the counter. They just like have a totally. spot where they lean, especially because I'm grabbing for them all day long. You know, that's, that's what I love. And sometimes when I'm okay. really cooking the spread for a group, I end up using like multiple cutting boards. So Right. Tons of good ones. Okay. We just yeah. moved into our new house. And so I'm like trying to get some of the kitchen essentials yeah. set up. And one thing I wanted to like refresh was my cutting board. So I'm going to look for wood cutting boards. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll send right you a deep. link to the ones I love. Perfect. I, even like better. Basic, that would yeah. actually be even better. <laughs> there's like a basic target one. I have two of that. I probably grab for those the most. They're just like a really easy to like whip around. They have like slanted edges. So if I want to push two together, they'll connect, you know, which I like. Perfect. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I will be on the lookout for that. Great. Um, okay. What would be like a go-to easy recipe that you would suggest anybody to try? Hmm. Um, let's see. I mean, my mind is just going to go to like favorites. And I think... Well, I think one of the all-time favorites is like a simple, it's really easy, white chicken chili. He uses mm. like rotisserie chicken, store-bought. I do a lot of things with like pre-prep prep chicken. Like you can prep your own or just buy rotisserie. I really like to buy that package of white white meat from Costco. A lot of people are like deathly afraid of that because it's like off-putting. I don't mind at all. I think it's great for soups. Yeah, and <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. So that's super easy. And I feel like it's just like everybody loves it. It's a winner. Um, and then one of my all-time favorites is probably um, shredded pork in the Instant Pot and three different recipes that I've had since the first cookbook. And I just still go back to those forever. You know, like it was still the first week of the meal plan. I put the Greek pork in because I just think it's so delicious. And I feel like, um, again, when you're counting macros, you might do like a lot of chicken and pork tenderloin. Right. To me, is like this very underrated. I've learned a lot of people don't love pork or don't want to eat pork. So they swap it out in the meal plan. I love it. And it's super lean. Yeah. And it's like a nice change from chicken. Um, so any of those, like the Greek pork or the barbecue pulled pork or the carnitas, those are all hits. I'm going to say mm-hmm. one more because I forgot. This is the one we probably repeat the most is the also pork tenderloin. Our Sunday brown sugar spice pork tenderloin. It's so easy. I feel like it doesn't seem fancy. It's so inexpensive, but really like we'll have people over on Sunday. We'll do a big spread and we'll have like grilled flank steak, like other meats. And I just feel like the pork tenderloin is always gone first. It's so good, but it's so cheap yeah. and it's so light and it's great. I have uh, seen the like pictures of that one before and it looks so amazing. It's really good. Is there any like special like thing that you do for that recipe? No, I mean, it's so easy. You just, I always get, I usually get the pork from Costco. You can get it anywhere. And no, it's just like a simple rub. Yeah. Let it sit on there. And then the, obviously like we grill it. I've learned a lot of people can't grill year round like I do. I have to constantly remind myself not everybody lives where I live, but it's definitely best on the grill, but you can also bake it, you know, but yeah. it's great. It Maybe. sounds like such a good Sunday dinner. It is. And like hearty, yeah. but like still good for you. Yeah, exactly. And the leftovers are so good. Make such good like sandwiches again with the full mm-hmm. protein thing. I love like the thin sliced leftovers. It's really great. Yeah, so good in the, crunch, in the crunch wrap. Yeah, so good. <laughs> mm. Okay. So is there a way that you have brought your kids into the process of being mindful about nutrients that's kind of like been age appropriate for them to understand? Yeah. I mean, 
maybe my biggest answer to that, because usually the, the question revolving my kids would be, you know, I and I totally understand it, but there's a natural concern for like, what are they learning? If you're like measuring food, you don't want them to become obsessive. You don't want them to think they need to like count their calories, all those things, which of course they don't. And I don't want them to. Um, but I really come to terms with that. In the beginning, I remember being really nervous. I would kind of like weigh my food in the corner when I first started kind of macros. Um, and then I just kind of embraced it. Like, okay, if I'm loving this and I'm feeling great and healthy and I'm eating like more than I was, before, like I was eating so much and feeling so great. This is my first experience with trying macros. Um, I just kind of leaned into it and they were still little. And so I would just explain like this, I'm using the scale because I've learned all these new things about how important your fat is for your brain and how important your carbs are for your energy and how important your protein is for building your muscles. And so I want to make sure I'm getting enough of each of these things in my meals because now that I've learned this, I'm like at the gym working out and trying to get strong. So I want to make sure I'm like maximizing the way that I'm eating. So we've just always been super open about that. It's never been like I need to lose weight or like that. That's too fat me. Right. Like none of that old school like vibe about it. So I don't feel like my kids, like I just... Cause I get it a lot where people are really concerned about that. And I almost forget that's an issue. Cause I just feel like my kids are so aware and it's such a, just a positive thing, just like right. why we exercise, why we're active. It's not, it's like we're ashamed of it and need to hide it from them. It's just the way that I like to make sure my food is full of nutrients. So yeah, we certainly don't like make sure they're getting a certain amount of anything, but, um, but they know like if they know they need to eat their protein, they need to eat their vegetables and, um, they know what on their plate is a carbohydrate, what's going to give them the most energy if they need a lot of energy before a run or yeah. something and what's going to yeah help the brain and everything. And, and of course, all the vitamins that come in the micronutrients and vegetables and right. we talk about it. Well, I think it's so important to talk about that. Like we are teaching our kids, like, you know, we are instilling behaviors and teaching things to them that they are going to use for the rest of their lives. So why wouldn't we want them to know this right. is how you like eat to fuel your body and to feel like the best version of yourself because you're strong, because you're eating a lot of protein. And this is how we make sure to do that. Right. Um, so I totally get that. What about bringing your kids into the kitchen? Um, you know, I have little girls who are starting to like kind of be interested in just like whatever we're doing. And my husband, Chris, does most of the cooking in our house. And he kind of like, likes to do it alone. But I feel like is now a good time to start bringing them in so they're interested and they're like aware of like what's happening in the kitchen. How did you kind of yeah. get to that with your kids? How old is your oldest? She's five. She's five. I do. It can be so hard. Like we know that, right? It's like giving them chores when you just want to do it yourself. So it's actually right. clean. Um, and it's still, I still get that. It's still harder for me with my boys. My girls, I almost can't remember them not being interested because they were so interested in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, Brittany, I was not, I didn't have my business back then when they were little. It's so much harder now, like being yeah. so busy. Um, but back then that was a big part of my life was just being in the kitchen to cook for, for normal reasons. And right. I do think it makes a huge difference in their interest in food. I mean, I'll still see with my son who's really picky and in third grade. Um, and I, I remember this when they were younger, they'll come home from school. Like, Oh, we're growing a garden at school. I was in charge of radishes. I had them on a salad. They were so good. And I'm like, excuse me. Like you would never touch that at home, but if they're a part of it, it totally changes it. And they are so much more interested. So I went hundred percent. My girls are very good eaters. They, they want, they eat exactly like me. They want all the vegetables, all the colors, all the variety. And yeah, I definitely think like being in there and being a part of it just makes them interested and genuinely like just helps evolve their taste buds. It makes, it gives them the yeah. interest, which then grows the taste buds, you know, it's important, but it can be hard. <laughs> I know. And that's where I'm just like, okay, like, sure, you can help. And I mean, honestly, I my oldest, the five-year-old, she loves Caesar salad. And I always think about like, how did we even like get her into that? And I remember her making salads with my mom 
And then like my mom would be like, here, try a bite. Like this is a piece of lettuce, you know, and like, and now she like wants the Caesar salad whenever we're eating Caesar salad. So So that actually like does make sense. And maybe I need to get Hazel to (laughs) help my kitchen a little bit more. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) And they're all just, you know, very little unique selves. And so, um, okay. So I know we've a little bit talked about like meal prepping or like mass making, um, protein. Is there a certain day of the week that you do this and how does like that process really look for you? Yeah, we usually, we usually cook something on Sunday and that's dinner that night, but we would, I would just almost never cook just enough for that night. So Sunday is kind of like, I'm going to do six. If we're going to grill chicken, we're going to do like six pounds of chicken or I'm going to do, you know, like four pork tenderloins in the Instant Pot, whatever I'm making, we're just going to make a lot of it. If we're grilling that yummy pork we love, we'll do four of them and we'll eat through maybe even two of them that night, but then the rest will be recycled through the week for meals, you know? Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't mean, I don't even feel like I am, I don't feel like, oh, it's meal prep day. I mean, Sunday's a, it's still a pretty full day for us with church and meetings. And so I just feel like I'm prepping dinner. I would, again, right. I would just always prep ex, a lot extra of the meat and whatever sauce I'm making. Cause a lot of times I'm going to make some yummy homemade sauce that's healthy. Um, I'm always going to make extra of that too. So that that's pretty much all week. I'll be drizzling that on my salads and on my crunch wraps and along with that protein, you know. Yeah. I'm going to start trying that, like just making more of the protein yeah. that we cook and then just using that throughout the week. I think that's, I kind of forget about that you can just make more, you know, yeah. when you're making it for <laughs> well, your and, meal. And I, and people, this is like a number one question. People get really hung up on like, but I don't like reheated meat, which like nobody does. Nobody wants a plate of like microwaved chicken like with a fork and knife you know like I would never eat it like that I would never eat like that but that and so it's all about how you repurpose it so the first night off the grill I might have just chicken on my plate that's not true it might always in a bowl over over salad and all the veggies all the roast and stuff we have whatever um but you might just eat it plain Ross eats his plain on a plate with a fork and knife but on like Wednesday when I pull it back out it's gonna be like I said sliced up and tucked into a yummy panini or even like chocolate right. small, I make, make chicken tacos or we're like broiling sandwiches. I'm never going to like microwave it or even air fry it. I'm probably going to like, it's going to get like the residual heat of the meal. It might be tossed into like a spaghetti mm-hmm. splash casserole or just tossed into pasta. Um, so you, it doesn't get that reheated flavor. Like I just, yeah. people get really hung up on like, I don't like leftovers, but I feel like you no, know, you're eating at restaurants where they might've prepped that chicken the day before too. And it doesn't feel like right. leftovers, you know? It's not left over. So true. Or, you know, or they're using pre cooked chicken, which is the same thing. Anyway. Yeah. Have you ever used a steam oven? No. I don't I don't even know anything about that. Tell me. Well, I, I don't really know a lot about it either. <laughs> I just know that we have one. Um, and it's like uses water. It's like hooked up to like a water line and it like steam cooks everything. And oh. it like literally anything, like my neighbors have one as well, and they cooked a pork tenderloin in one recently, and it was unbelievable. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if it's like the way the humidity in the oven yeah, because of the it water. Super, super moist. Interesting. Yeah. So I then know, do you I'll do to keep trying it and do you let do you know. Rever- do you like do a reverse sear? Do you take it out and then like sear it afterwards or sear it before? You can. You can. Um, there's like I mean, there's a list of things that we have not used ours yet, but yeah. I am very interested to I'm try so it. And even like, because you can even like heat things up in it instead of using the microwave, you would just like do like a quick oh, heat that's in amazing. the steam oven. Yeah. And then it's like not that gummy, you know, yeah. way that people don't like meat. Um, that's yeah, so. Amazing. I don't know. Uh, I'll, well, now I'll, I know something I'll, else I need in my kitchen. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I have a few questions and then we're going to wrap up. Um, one which I 
would love to know, do you have any type of like playlist that you feel like you're, you listen to in the kitchen while you're cooking or do you just like no music? Like how, what's your vibes like in the kitchen? I know. I'm always listening to music unless I have to be like recording for a real. Right. It's always hard. I hate turning the music off. Um, but I'm the worst. Like my kids would just laugh at me because I don't know who anybody is, what they're called, <laughs> anybody's name. <laughs> So I'll find like one artist that I like a song and then I just ask for them on Alexa every day until like everybody's right. so sick of it. So right now it's Noah Khan. I'm always listening to like Noah Khan and similar artists. That's what I ask. Oh Alexa, my gosh. Please play Noah Khan and similar <laughs> artists. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm going to have to try that one out in our kitchen. We, I started listening over the weekend. I think it was like kitchen hits it was like a one on pandora that was like miami kitchen hits which is like a weird like combination but it was like upbeat but like smooth kind of like smooth vibe so i like that one was a good one too (laughs) great i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it today tell you what i think um (laughs) Okay. One more question. This is something, a question that I ask all of our guests to kind of like wrap up our podcast. Um, what is the most meaningful act of kindness that someone has extended to you that has had a lasting impact on your life? That is so hard. So I thought about it and I feel like a horrible person because I'm like, I'm sure, I'm sure that there have been so many acts of kindness toward me. But of course, when you're asked, you're like, I can't figure it out. Of them, you know? <laughs> right. I don't know. No, no one's been kind. <laughs> no one's ever been nice to me. I'm sure there's so many. But, but so my answer to that is maybe cheating. But what comes to mind is just like my husband. That's so annoying. Um, but he genuinely is probably like the nicest person that I know. He is just really a really nice person. <laughs> You know, like, like the older you get, the more you realize, like, we can all be kind. And it's like a goal and a responsibility, I think, to like be a kind person. But I really think we have like our own spiritual gifts. I'm a believer in that. And I think that some people are just gift, like gifted with more kindness. And that's how he sees the world. He just like, he criticizes, he doesn't like see things in a critical way, you know, he just yeah. kind of sees the best in people. My daughter, Sophia is the same. She's wired just like him, just like him. So it's interesting with kids, right? You might see something in your spouse that you think is just fluky. And then to see it in your yeah. kid, you're like, oh, this is just like who they are. Like there was no right. escaping this, you know? Um, anyway, so he comes to mind for me because when you ask that's had a lasting impression on your life, I mean, obviously like he's like the hugest part of my life. Um, and when it comes to all this stuff and to my business, I just think of like in the beginning when I didn't know it could be anything and I was still spending so much time because I was getting very excited about it. And I, I started to see the writing on the wall and I thought I would be a food blogger. I thought that would be, I am, but I thought that would be the, the part that made it a business. Um, so I was just spending so many hours. I was like up all night writing, creating this new blog and, um, and there was no money and no, you know, he's a financial advisor. Like this return on investment was like very terrible. I was like, yeah, absent. and nothing was coming from it except that I was really like loving it. And he's just like so supportive. He's just, he'll do like anything to make my life easier and make me like available for what's important to me. And he just never makes me feel yesterday. I had like a breakdown day. One of those days where I was just feeling like a lot of mom guilt, um, Cause it's such a balance. And right now with the meal plan, yeah. I am kind of like struggling to keep my head above water. There's a lot. And so he'd gone to like a lunch at my son's school that I didn't go to. I'm like feeling, <clears throat> I keep getting choked up about this. So sorry. <laughs> but um, anyway, and I just feel like there's a lot of room for improvement for me to find like the right balance, but he just like never makes me feel bad about it. He always, he's just like my biggest cheerleader. Anyway. So it's like such a super, great super trait too. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. amazing. I love that's that. Really nice. <laughs> that's so great. Nice guy. Um, okay. So Lily, you have four cookbooks. I'm going to leave the link in the show notes to uh, all four of those so that our listeners can grab them if they're interested. I personally have all four of them. We cook from those cookbooks all the time. 
The one pot recipes are amazing and so easy. So thank you for creating easy, healthy recipes. Um, so listeners, if you guys want to try them out, those, those details will be in the show notes. And then Lily, do you mind sharing, um, where our listeners can find you? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at Lily eats and tells and same with my blog. It's just Lily eats and tells.com. And of course, both of those spots will have links to like the books and the meal plan. But mostly I'm hanging out on Instagram. That's where like I am, you know. Yes, I love it. Great. Well, this has been such a great conversation. I have learned so much. I know our listeners have learned a lot too. So just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so flattered. It was awesome.